and uh, welcome back. Uh, so for our next uh, speaker, also for a company working for, for Sanoma, uh, doing uh, security audits and, uh, and the like. Um, well, uh, Jana Kauhan, and, uh, so please take it away. Ah, there we go. Better? Okay, cool. Thank you. So, yeah, hello everyone. I'm Janne Kauhanen and I'm here to talk about uh, digital footprint. And I'm going to describe the term uh, a little later on on the slides. But before I do, I just want to note that it has got something to do with privacy. And with that, uh, I can change the slide where I wanted to start off with a quote, and this is from Snowden, saying that whoever states that they don't care about privacy because they have nothing to hide is essentially the same than stating that freedom of speech doesn't matter because I have got nothing to say. And I, I, I think this is brilliant. And it's really defines <coughs> privacy. A uh, few quick words about me. Well, I'm a hacker, whatever that means. Uh, I work as a senior security specialist at Nixu. Uh, I do penetration testing, so I break into places. Uh, I'm also open source enthusiastic, so I use choose everything I use, usually based on that, or mostly, at least. Uh, I'm a, <coughs> what you would say, card-carrying member of the Tinfoil Hat Brigade. And, I mean, I worry about privacy and security all the time. And I'm already way over beyond the point of no return. I worry about this stuff so much, I, sometimes I can't go to sleep because my brain keeps, you know, thinking what all the, what's wrong with the internet and stuff like that. Uh, also, <coughs> it doesn't control all aspects of life, but uh, when it comes to technology, I'm a control freak. So I need to know what's happening inside my computer. I need to know what my devices are up to. I need to know where my browser is talking to what my operating system is doing under the hood <laughs> and things like that. I just have to know. And that's why also the open source technology fits in quite nicely because with open source it's possible uh, to dig deeper and go check what's running under the hood. Whereas in proprietary, proprietary technologies there are m most of the times there are just like black boxes and you don't know what's happening underneath. So, <coughs> what do I mean uh, when I talk about digital footprint? Uh, well, first off, you could divide digital footprint in active and passive sides. And active is is something that you knowingly uh, leave behind. So when I post a status update on Facebook or comment something on a forum, send an email, that leaves a digital footprint behind and I know that it does. I'm aware of it. Uh, but the passive side is something that uh, these technologies and devices leave behind uh, without you not necessarily being aware of it or, or happens deep in the background. So you don't necessarily understand all the implications. So <coughs> digital fo footprint is a very wide subject, but today I'm going to be mostly talking about online tracking. And you guys probably call it web analytics or whatever. And how do I defend 
myself against it. Or at least try to. So I'm gonna be talking about this. Uh, raise your hand if you know where this image comes from or if you recognize the term light beam. Okay, I'm just quickly gonna show it to you. So, um, just a sec. So I have another browser here. Uh, the, and this is uh, called Mozilla Light Beam. It's a browser extension for Firefox that uh, visualizes, uh, well, online trackers, you would say. And uh, let's try it out with something like Helsingin Sanomat. Let's load Helsingin Sanomat here. And we can start seeing some pr patterns forming there. So this is what I'm talking about. And I'm going to just open up few more sites and let's say Oops. there we go <coughs> and this is the freely available anyone can download and use this tool and I wanted to show you this because uh, this is the best illustration of what's happening inside your browser that I've seen as of yet. And it shows where the browser is connecting to. Apparently we don't see Ilta Sanomat there yet. I don't know why is that. I'll just quickly reload it and yeah, there we go. So this is quite nice. So uh, the Big white dots are the ones I went to, so I typed those in the URL bar. And the triangles are something else, so yeah, it goes spastic like that. But um, so these are, well, mostly what I consider online trackers, and of course. The ones in the middle are the ones that are linked with every of this, each of these sites. So it's not only Sonoma who is seeing that I'm browsing these pages, but all these other parties also. And I see we have a nice number there. There's a total of 69 third-party sites currently connected. And you can imagine browsing for a month and you can think to yourself how the image would look like. Or you can try it out. But yeah, highly recommended for illustrating that. <coughs> and I'm gonna talk about this. So this is a page load. Uh, I'm reading some news from Helsingin Sanomat. I can't recall which one it was. Uh, but you can see all the different IP addresses uh, on the left. Then there's latitude and longitude. And then there's the HTTP referrer header being sent to these hosts. And on there you can see all the different countries that my browser communicates to. So if I check, I can see Denmark, Germany, United States, uh, Netherlands, Sweden, Ireland, uh, Italy, and probably a whole bunch of else. This is only just a small snapshot. So. And this is from a traffic capture. You can run something like TCP dump uh, to what's the traffic. And when I see this, I, I keep thinking to myself, why does Italy or Germany need to know uh, 
what news I'm reading at any particular moment. And also, if you imagine someone in Germany, because I don't know who these are, uh, checking constantly what news I read, well, that may not be so scary at first, but uh, think about having that data from the period of five years. And it's not just the news, it's with everything. So if they know from five, five years period all the news I read, they already can construct a quite <coughs> detailed profile about me and, and know how I think and what I'm interested of and stuff like that. So, so I'm going to be talking about this. <laughs> Not so much about this, but these are still uh, things that contribute to digital footprint. So mobile devices are one important part of it all because our whole lives are in these small devices. Everything, mails, Facebooks, uh, locations, all the photos, everything. Um, and of course, well, telephone records, but I wanted to pinpoint also Wi-Fi because that's also something that can be used to track you. And that's also something that an average adversary can use to uh, track you or, or stalk people or pinpoint people from crowds and things like that. Then payment cards. Of course, every time I pay with a bank card or a credit card, it leaves a mark. Not going to be focusing on those, but I recommend checking Mikko Hyppönen's presentation at Republica. It's available on YouTube. It has really nice points. Uh, then, of course, in addition to credit cards, uh, different bonus cards and other loyalty programs, of course, those also leave a mark. And maybe this is something that Mr. Arnio should have considered also. I don't know. Traveling leaves a mark, so whether it's uh, paying your tickets with a cro uh, credit card or using travel cards or whatever. Actually, I was in China a while back and it struck me kind of odd that in there you couldn't travel by train without identifying yourself. So you didn't have an option to pay a, uh, buy a train ticket with cash and just travel with a train anonymously. You had to identify yourself and I, I thought to myself that, wow, that's, that's horrible. But then again, w we have the same here in Finland. I mean, who pays a train ticket with a cash just to, you know, not leave traces? No one, which uh, it's just not that obvious. You do? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Well, then, uh, for instance, entertainment systems, listening to your conversations, I'm referring to Samsung and LG and other, other vendors that have on their user manual or, or in the license agreement that, yeah, you're not supposed to have private conversations within the reach of your device because they record the conversations and send them to the internet. Nice. Of course, cloud, we've seen a whole bunch of different data leaks relating to the cloud, people's personal photos and you know, stuff like that. Medical records and stuff like that. All of these contribute to the digital footprint, but I'm not going to focus on this. There's a quick summary here, so yeah, no one is safe, really. You always leave a trail behind whatever you do. A um, few things uh, for background. Um, so <clears throat> as I'm going to be focusing on web analytics, it usually uses JavaScript to track people 
and of course cookies in the browser link your device or your browser to your identity so if you're logged into Google or Facebook or whatever you you have identified your browser as being you and whatever else you do that's gonna be linked to your actual actual identity and <coughs> I have a small disclaimer here so uh, I'm gonna be jumping or it might seem that I'm jumping between different topics uh, online tracking annoying ads big brother watching us and spying us but that's because it's all connected so when I try to protect myself against this uh, I either try to protect myself against everything or none of it and one example is that when you run uh, certain browser extensions to protect you uh, for instance myself I, I haven't ever seen any need to run a separate ad blocking add-on on my browser because I run a whole bunch of other extensions and they take care of all also the ads uh, and also I, I might be completely wrong here with everything that I'm going to say because I only see my side of it uh, so I don't see the engines doing the tracking or the data that's being stored about me maybe some of you do and maybe you can shed a light to that but I'm trying to defend myself blindly so I don't know what gets stored and it's a it's a matter of lack of transparency so I don't know who's watching where the data gets stored who uh, processes it where it might be sold or you know where it is I I have no clue I just assume stuff and of course think of worst case scenarios and try to build my defense model or whatever around that so yeah I'm I might be completely wrong with everything <coughs> so why care anyway well uh, first off yeah the big brother is watching us uh, and also there was this example about uh, NSA using Google Analytics cookies to track people because Google did it so well and the NSA just figured they'd tap that and you know because Google has already linked your identity uh, to your browser and you're browsing to those cookies uh, yeah uh, also I come from a world where JavaScript code is evil so it is this foreign code running in your browser doing its thing and I don't know what it is so for instance uh, cross-site scripting attacks are, are one thing that I'm particularly afraid of and they are really prevalent you can find those in pretty much any web application uh, if you want to see what XSS attacks can do you can go check uh, beef which is a uh, browser exploitation framework so it has all kinds of nifty tricks or attacks when you get JavaScript code running in someone's browser also when browsers have vulnerabilities uh, many times JavaScript is used in at least some part of the exploitation process so to get my machine compromised uh, the attacker needs to run something there and of course uh, this has been a huge topic for the past two years uh, I mean I have the right to privacy and also and I'm gonna talk about this uh, a bit more on the next slides but intrusive ads because I mean the it's just annoying everything keeps popping up and distracting you and 
it, it has gone too far. <laughs> and of course, also uh, the old wisdom that uh, the internet does not forget, so anything stored about you is there forever. At least it's safe to assume so. And also my general dissatisf dissatisfaction of all things Web 2.0 everything's dynamic and linked together and uh, you know you don't <coughs> and the browsers are, are like swiss army knives nowadays doing all kinds of things and uh, it's just scary sometimes so <coughs> this is what i'm talking about uh this is your average online experience uh first few years ago uh, you had the content which, which was main part of the page you were at. Now it's like a, this matchbox sized box and you need to browse through different sub-pages to read the freaking content. And, and I, I just don't get it. it has, it's, it's annoying. I mean, you know what I'm talking about here. And uh, I have an example here. So uh, this is a comparison. Uh, on the left, there's like a stock browser, Firefox. And on the right, uh, there's a browser with privacy enhancements, which means extensions blocking, blocking stuff. So with the stock browser, I load about 160 images. Uh, where in comparison uh, with the privacy enhancements, I load about 130. And remember how I said, uh, to me, JavaScript is evil, right? So with the stock browser, the browser loads 66 JavaScript, file, JavaScript files, files, which are o uh, over 2 megabytes in size. Uh, and with the extensions, it loads 3. And of course, the CSS and the HTML files, well, they're almost the same. Uh, I also have two flash files less. And check the total size of the page. So with stock browser, it's a bit over six megabytes. And with the <coughs> extensions, it's a bit less than two and a half megabytes. And the page load times also vary greatly so it's almost 50 seconds and it's well almost 30 seconds so <coughs> I save 20 seconds loading that same page and I get the same content the same content I don't miss out on anything and I, I think this really tells a story you know about the current state um, also, so yeah, we're talking about online trackers. Uh, this is a screenshot from the Ghostery extension. And there's like 10 trackers. And I'm just thinking to myself, isn't one enough or maybe two, but 10. And this, is, this isn't even much. I mean, there are some sites that ha have like 20 third-party trackers linked and they might link other trackers and it's just a, a mess. It's actually better to have more than, than less because if you only had one, the linking would be kind of trivial then. Linking? Uh, li li linking, the, now you have ten, 10 different trackers so there's a little bit chance that the, all, all the guys don't know everything you did everywhere but with the one tracker that, that one guy would know everything you did anywhere that's, that's, that's a <laughs> yeah yeah that, uh, that's good point so so what you're saying is that not putting all the eggs in the same basket right mm, something like that yeah yeah but then you're forgetting there's facebook there's google uh, they already know everything yes and we'll come back to that <laughs> later on also one more thing about javascript files and uh, this is only just one example and it's actually used as uh, attack vector so this was from a few years back uh, there was news that Suomi 24 which I guess is one of the 
biggest sites in, in Finland, distributed ma malware for their users, which is of course really nice. You, you'd really expect that from the largest site uh, on Finland. But it wasn't their fault. Uh, it was the third party advertisers that had been presumably breached and they provided malware. But these are the kind of problems we have when everything is linked together. Uh, then I'm gonna talk about defenses. So, and this is only a small subset, but I think these are like the ones that could be used by anyone. So this doesn't go that deep necessarily. Uh, so choosing your technologies, because with some technologies it's not possible to limit stuff or, or try to defend yourself. They're just, you know, giving away your data and you, you just can't affect it in any way. Uh, behavior, because you really need to kind of learn new ways uh, to do things. When you're trying to defend against tracking and minimize or reduce your digital footprint, um, you need to make certain changes in the, in the patterns. Uh, encryption is important. Uh, and this is like mostly about limiting, for instance, if I load a page from Ireland, every step on the, on the way can see the traffic and encrypting that improves the situation a bit, at least. And also when you're on some public Wi-Fi's, uh, encryption is really important and I'll mention something uh, later on relating to that. Uh, browser extensions, so, and also modifying your browser or, or modifying the behavior of your browser is one of the main things. And one thing that I really can't recommend uh, straight off because it uh, requires a heavy understanding of how the technology works and what are the possible implications of using the technology, but Tor or the onion routing, the anonymity uh, protocol is, is something you can also use, but really can't recommend that for, you know, everyone. So uh, this is one example, uh, this is just a mobile device. So, and even this isn't possible with, with every device. I mean, limiting uh, what kind of access do different applications have to resources like your location or camera or microphone. And I think this is important and this isn't even possible with, with all the devices on the market. Also, choose to use VPN. Uh, for instance, myself, I, I travel every now and then and I need to use these scary Wi-Fi networks that are on the hotel or on the airport and I don't know who's watching or recording that traffic or what, what happens on the network, they could be malicious and they probably, most of them are. So using VPN you can at least at some point uh, secure your traffic. And actually, yeah, uh, now we're gonna talk about something that some of you already mentioned. And this is more of the <coughs> active uh, digital footprint side, but it really begins with, well, for instance, uh, for starters, logging off. So, and yeah, so Google, Facebook, it's true. They know absolutely everything 
about you, and I mean everything. So, if you have Facebook open or Google open and you try to, you know, reduce your digital footprint, you've lost the game already. It's just not possible. They know every step you make and there's no winning in that. So, start by logging out. <laughs> And then, uh, and of course, this is only one example, but Google is the biggest, biggest of them all and wants to know everything about you and tracks your every move. So, but there are alternatives to Google. And these are just examples. I mean, for search engine, and of course, search engine is also one of the most important parts because it knows your deepest thoughts. Uh, it, it, it goes straight into your subconsciousness with the search queries and again think about the search queries of the past 10 years and paint a picture because I, uh, I wouldn't even want to see the picture that has been painted about me really. So but there are alternatives and DuckDuckGo is, is one that uh, has been more and more popular ever since the Snowden revelations. Uh, I, I'm not sure if there are really uh, alternatives to YouTube, but I just listed a few and I'm not sure if they're any good. And of course Gmail, I mean pretty much everyone I know uses Gmail. But there are alternatives to that. I cannot recommend any one specific one of them. But for instance, on the site, there, um, there are listed a whole bunch of uh, privacy focused email providers. And if you're really interested, you should go check, check the project called Prism Break, which lists uh, mainstream technologies on the left hand side and the more privacy and security focused alternatives on the right hand side. So yeah, that much about Google. And then uh, we'll go to the browser and this is just a sh short list. But for starters you should really start using private browsing uh, just for several reasons, but first off to get rid of the cookies because they are used to track you. And also because of the uh, browser's cache. So that's also one aspect of the digital footprint, what your browser leaves behind uh, stored in your computer. But for instance, uh, I've done some tests, uh, testing some web application and noticing that, you know, uh, the credit card data being processed by that application is being stored in my browser. So it's there and I have no uh, knowledge of what kind of treasure trove of information my browser's cache is. So just, you know, keeping it clear all the time is, is much simple. Uh, then the browser extensions, there are three ones that are <coughs> available to uh, separate or different browsers. Uh, the HTTPS Everywhere uh, extension from EFF, uh, which enforces HTTPS connection over HTTP or the plain text one whenever possible. Uh, uBlock uh, is the one actual trying to do the uh, tracking protection or, or protect yourself, you against the evil online trackers. Uh, then NoScript, well it has already developed into a whole suite but the main purpose is to block the execution of JavaScript files which I already said that they're evil, right? Uh, and for Firefox only, there's the Lightbeam extension, which is really nice. Uh, and 
these two are actually settings inside the about config configuration. Uh, the first one is Firefox's built-in tracking protection feature. And for instance, the second one uh, is the is tackling the problem of the HTTP referer header that I showed uh, in the beginning. So it spoofs that. So whenever it calls a site, it sets, sets the referer header to that actual URL. So it doesn't leak information of where it was linked from. And it doesn't even break any sites. Whereas removing the HTTP header completely breaks a whole bunch of sites already. Uh, then I'm mentioning DNT or do not track uh, standard here, but I, I really don't believe it helps at all. So it's just a header that your browser sends that uh, please, uh, well, in essence it states that would you be kind enough not to track me? And the servers and the trackers choose whether they respect that or not. And I, my guess is that no one really respects that. So here are a few things. And as I said already, it's only a small subset. But it's not all good, right? So I, I put this one tweet here because I think it's funny and it resembles how I also behave online. So if I need to go more than two accept clicks on the no script menu, I'm not going to decide. I just make the decision of, yeah, it's not that important. I can see the cat pictures elsewhere, right? Or whatever. Uh, my browsing or my online experience is, is constantly broken. I mean, I need to debug why, why this site doesn't work and what's, you know, keeping me from seeing some content or, or cat videos or, or whatever. Uh, also, well, this is already, again, uh, the tinfoil hat side, but I would bet that my browsing, you know, sticks out. I don't blend in anymore to the average user. Uh, it has a different kind of fingerprint. And if anyone's actually, you know, looking closely into the traffic, it's going to be, you know, raising flags because it's that much different. And of course, it's always a compromise. So if I would want to reduce my digital footprint as much as I, I would really like. I would just need to throw all my electric devices into the trash bin and move into a cave and not speak to anyone ever again. So then I would reduce my digital footprint. And I can't do that. So uh, even though I, I try to pay attention and defend myself for as such, it's, it's still always a compromise. <clears throat> but luckily, things are change, changing and, and then they, they change rapidly. So browsers are evolving. For instance, I already mentioned the uh, tracking protection built in into Firefox, not enabled by default. Uh, there was also a rumor uh, on the internet that iOS 9 and the mobile, mobile Safari browser is going to have, have this uh, possibility to run content blocking extensions. Uh, also the developer tools bring the transparency to browsers. So now I have possibility to see what the browser is doing. Whereas a few years back, I, I didn't have a clue or didn't have possibility with the stock browser to see what's happening. Uh, IE and Chrome are probably also evolving. I don't know about those and I don't care, but I hope they're, you know, moving the same track. 
And with this, I, I hope that the advertisers and trackers also need to evolve. For instance, the uh, content blocking extension in Safari. I mean, if you imagine all iPhone users turning that on, I, I would imagine that advertisers and, and trackers and all that would need to adapt quite quickly. Um, where's my cursor? And yeah, uh, that's a brief look uh, into passive digital footprint or online tracking. And it, this was just a small, narrow perspective because it's such a wide subject. But I hope it, it brought something new or maybe someone learned something or intrigued some questions and hope it was interesting. Are there any questions? Yeah. Okay, so, so the question was that if I choose to not use email, but my friends does, uh, how do you protect against that? And yeah, yeah, the answer is not, I, I haven't figured a way. I mean, yeah, of course, security and privacy uh, all relate to the weakest link. And even though you would try everything in your powers to improve that, if your friends use it and you need to communicate with your friends, it's in a, in a sense it's lost, but then again with, you know, different things. So communicating with someone else, you use different channels. So it's a matter of, it's not absolute security, it's improving the situation and reducing your digital footprint, but it's a, it's a good point. And yeah, someone always <laughs> kind of uses something I, I wouldn't want and it's a compromise. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't quite catch that. Ah, no, I, uh, I, I missed the paper machine from your uh, story about how to defend yourself against uh, Well, it, it, it was, <coughs> for instance... Is there a reason for that? Is it not very effective? Or? I, I don't know whether it's effective because there's no transparency. I just try to do my best and, you know, hope it works. And I, I really don't know for sure. What do you think are the opportunities for publishers like us uh, who still make money in a world with uh, more tightly knowledge about privacy and, uh, and the way to protect against it? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I have very little answers, but, but somehow some new business models would have to evolve. And, you know, not, you know, everything coming from ads. And for instance, myself, I, I would be much than willing to pay extra to get some privacy. But now I don't have any uh, option. This is the model and someone chose it, it wasn't me, uh, it's the current state and I don't like it, but there would have to be some competitive uh, models that would support uh, more privacy. But I, unfortunately, I, I don't know what that model would be, but you know, paying for content, I, I would be happy to pay for stuff that I currently, uh, consume free of charge on the internet, paying with 
seeing all the ads and yeah. stuff. Because that's the, the problem now you're paying with your behavior. And exactly. And, and of course, this is the old wisdom that if it's free and you're not paying, you're the product. Yes. Yeah. It's like a free puppy uh, in some sense. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but me, me question, but, but, but to you guys, yeah. so how much <coughs> tracking I do get from Sanoma's side if I'm paid customer than, than if I browse for free? Uh, yeah, so this is my personal opinion uh, because we're not there to represent the, the, the yeah, um, the, um, uh, also when you pay for a newspaper, you also get like uh, advertisements because it's like not enough to cover everything yeah. by just the subscriptions. Yeah. Yeah, but um, the, the you don't get the ads without tracking in, in current yeah. for, yeah. Um, yeah. I feel that uh, good personalized ads are better than like really generic ones. Uh, so I'm not interested in car ads when I'm not buying a new car, um, and I'm not interested in holiday uh, ads when I'm just returned. So I think there's. A, 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 be a benefit in having more targeted ads, um, and that also has something to do with the price. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a really good discussion yeah. over um, uh, Don't over, blame over me. dinner. So um, uh, uh, thanks a lot, and please give a round of applause. Thank you.